Hey everyone, I'm Scott Cunningham, AKA Scottsy Business. And today we're going to be going through my social media metrics and earnings report for August, where I look at all of the platforms that I've been using, share some insights on them, and most importantly, share with you guys how much I was able to earn just from sharing my content on these platforms. I didn't have to, you know, do anything crazy. It was just sharing what I would already otherwise share on legacy platforms that I would otherwise not be really earning much on or anything at all. And then just sharing them on new crypto monetized and blockchain platforms and uh, just staying consistent and dedicated to it. And then tracking my earnings and seeing how much I was able to earn. And it is very significant. Uh, I think a lot of you who are debating, ah, do I use these other platforms or not? A lot of reasons why you might or might not want to, but uh, money is always an easy one for people to be like, okay, well actually, yeah, I mean, if I can earn significantly more here than I can on YouTube or wherever else, or even just posting on many places earns you a little bit on each, and then you're able to take all of that and uh, get a, a large sum of money. It, uh, it really makes a difference, especially over time and with crypto appreciating in value. That's the key thing. And I'll touch on that in a moment. Before we dive into everything today, a quick word from my sponsor. A big thank you and shout out to my sponsor, Cake Wallet, which is an open source, non-custodial Bitcoin and Monero wallet that also has a built-in exchange. It's available on iOS and Android. Thanks again to my sponsor. So let's jump into it. Um, this shows you everything that I've earned since I started tracking in March of 2020. It's been about a year and a half now since I started tracking and I've earned about $32,000 in a year and a half, which is significant. But keep this in mind, as I was just saying, I, it's appreciated a great deal in value. And I would say it's probably closer to like 55,000 now. Um, I, it's hard to do the exact calculation. I could probably get somewhere close and figure this out, but uh, it's hard to do the exact calculation because I've sold a lot of my cryptocurrencies for Bitcoin and Ethereum, which have actually massively outperformed a lot of these coins. So I might be a little higher than otherwise if you had just held it, but uh, you're going to earn a significant amount if you're not just cashing out every time directly to fiat and uh, you're in a good spot in uh, in the crypto market where it's not you know bearish and you're losing money every month because obviously that would suck. But um, from my experience, I've typically just been appreciating value on all these coins, or even if I just take them out and put them into Ethereum or Bitcoin or whatever it happens to be. So very, very significant. I think, um, you know, $55,000 or so is a livable wage in a year and a half. I think a lot of people could easily get by on that. So, and I mean, I've been doing this as a side hustle. I still have a full-time job. Um, which has been taking a lot of my time and I've actually been posting a lot less, uh, a lot less than I'd like to be posting. So I do want to ramp that up if I can, uh, and know that, uh, I want to be posting much more than I am. And I am really trying to get things going again and make sure I set aside the time and just really push myself to to get more out here for you guys. Cause I want to do this stuff. It's just really hard for me to find the time these days. But um, crypto shows that uh, patience is a virtue. Last month I earned $1,636, which is more than double of the previous months, uh, month and the past few months. It's, it's a significant increase. So really, really happy to see that. Uh, it's been fantastic. And, um, this really kind of gives me the insight or shows me that uh, the earnings are highly tied to the way the market is performing, I would say. Um, it, it seems to be the case. It's the more data I collect, the more months that go by, it really feels like that is the case. Um, I'm sure it's also tied to you know, the hype around crypto are a lot of people searching up certain things that I'm posting about. Uh, and I've been posting less in the past few months. So, you know, a lot of this stuff makes sense, but in terms of the overall market, I would say when things are really hot, when there's a lot of investments pouring in, uh, you're probably also going to make a lot more on social as well. 
But this isn't me saying that you should only focus on social during the good times because you have to build your base and uh, and just stay consistent. There'll be months where you earn a lot on certain platforms and there'll be months where you earn very little and things will kind of change. But the point is that you're on all of them, or at least this is what I'm doing, is I'm on all of them. So I'm taking advantage of the swings and I'm just, I'm using everything that is at my disposal to um, make the most. And it's not just about earning too, though obviously that's a significant motivation, but you know, you're protecting yourself against censorship. If there's issues on one platform or several pl platforms, you've got all these other places where your content is being hosted. It's very, very important to have yourself set up so that you don't have to, you know, go back and try to fix everything after something happens. It's much easier to just set yourself up for success and future proof your content um, so that you don't have to worry about these kinds of things. So jumping into the actual um, report here, not a ton has uh, changed, you know, like I guess achievements wise, but if we jump into the actual metrics here, it's um, everything's been kind of moving along as, as as usual, nothing super specific that I need to point out. Um, a tiny bit slower, I would say, for follower growth and such. But um, by the next report that I do, I will have passed 140,000. So that is pretty cool. I'm hoping to pass 400,000 engagements, but that might not be until like two months from now. But yeah, everything has been going very well uh, in terms of individual platforms. YouTube has been a bit of a struggle because ever since I got that false community strike, I've just been losing followers. Uh, it's been less and less each month, which is, I guess, I guess good, but uh, I would hope to see that it starts to turn around and go up again, but it really feels like YouTube is, uh, is really throttling my ability to grow right now. And it, it just feels so apparent ever since that happened with the false community strike and having people actually reach out and say that they've been unsubscribed to my channel and that they have to go back and resubscribe. So yeah, I mean, it's like, uh, it's exactly what I expected to happen eventually at some point. And, um, you know, it's good to know that I've done everything in my power to, you know, set myself up for when this actually goes down. And if I ever actually get, you know, fully demonetized or fully banned off of YouTube uh, whenever that day eventually comes, because, you know, I've been banned off of Daily Motion and Vimeo and, you know, there's sites that will disapprove certain videos if they're related to finance, like Brighteon and cost.tv has to approve my posts. And there's just all this red tape around everything these days. So it's nice to um, have all these other platforms that you can post on and not worry about all that kind of stuff. Mines has been growing at a reasonable rate. Publish OX is good. Hive is good. Twitter's been all right, a little bit slower lately. Uh, Read.cash is kind of picking up more for me. I'm spending more time on Read.cash because um, I just think there's really, really cool ways to use Read.cash to your advantage. Uh, taking advantage of the boosting system that I feel is one of the better ones. It's very fair. It's, it works really well. Um, one thing I also really like about read.cash is when you earn on read.cash, there's no limitations. They're instantly paying you the money right when you get it. And then you could take it right away. There's no minimum withdrawals. There's no KYC. There's no, there's no wait times for your money. You don't have to wait seven days to eventually claim it or anything like that. Uh, and there's no limitations as well on how long you can earn. Uh, like a lot of platforms have. So read.cash has been fantastic for that. I was having issues on it the other day, but um, I sent out a bunch of emails to support and to a bunch of different people. And then it went away. I never got a response, but it, the issue was fixed. So, you know, it is what it is. That's the only thing when you've got anonymous teams or like fully decentralized platforms, it's always going to be a little bit harder to get support, but um, it's definitely worth putting in the time and effort and uh, I'm re-upping all my sponsorships lately. So uh, do keep a lookout for that. But there's literally like 500 to 1000 sponsorships that I'm doing and I have to actually go and individually add to them. Read.cash, if you ever watch this, please add a top up all or, you know, some sort of mechanism that would allow it to be easily done. Um, yeah, it make my life a lot easier. Anyways, 
library is um, chugging along. Uh, my subscribers have still been really, really slowed down. Like the growth of subscribers is just, it's very, very slow, unfortunately. But, you know, video views and everything are still doing okay. Um, even if it's a little bit down, I'm pretty sure it's just because I've been posting less. Again, I do intend to do more. Bitlink right now is down, so... I couldn't actually get the uh, the video views from there. And that does kind of throw off the overall thing here. So do keep that in mind um, that this might be a little wonky on the next one because I might have to make the update. Really all it'll be is video views and it might just seem like the video views have jumped more than usual in the next report. But, you know, either way. Um, and then... Torum has been really good. They're doing a lot of stuff. They've changed a lot of things around on their platform and um, they're like gearing up for a big NFT launch, doing staking with XTM and eventually setting up withdrawals, which I'm highly anticipating. And I will finally do a review and a guide and everything for Torum once they do have withdrawals set up and that's all good. Uh, the reason that their CEO told me they don't have withdrawals yet is because they're setting up an entire uh, BSC network, Binance Smart Chain, um, so that they can get around all the issues that a lot of other platforms are having with Ethereum gas fees. And that makes a lot of sense. And I think that's fair. So I will give them the benefit of the doubt and um, I will report on it once they actually get withdrawals. I never really want to endorse a platform that it's a, a struggle to withdraw or that it's basically impossible or requires, you know, KYC or whatever it happens to be. Almost every platform that I use doesn't really have this issue. The only platform that I actively talk about and use that does have this issue is Minds. Um, for people who are using Minds, you do have to pay monthly with a credit card uh, to be able to withdraw or you have to spend like $10,000 or something like that for a lifetime subscription, which doesn't really make any sense um, to be able to withdraw. So, you know, on mines, there is kind of some restrictions there and I'm not a big fan of that. I haven't actually paid for anything to do withdrawals. I just spend my mines tokens now on boosting, um, but that seems kind of frivolous too, since the token is going up, but the boost is still the same amount of boost. And the token isn't really going up because boosts are more valuable. So it seems kind of frivolous to be wasting it on boosts, but I'm not going to withdraw it. So kind of a conundrum there. I still post on like 40 something platforms because you can still get a lot of visibility, promote the other platforms where you are earning money. Uh, you can still do a lot for your organic, you know, reach. Um, and your engagement and all that kind of stuff. And it's definitely going to really help your platforms where you are earning. So I would never discount a platform because you're not earning a lot there. If it's still, you know, trying to be integrated with the blockchain, trying to be decentralized, trying to do a bunch of uh, things that I agree with, it doesn't always have to be, you know, producing a ton of money. Like I said, I've been using Torm for quite some time and I've never actually really been able to withdraw but uh, it's a great place for social media and, you know, building a following and being able to promote your other stuff. Very, very good for that. So I would never discount any of that. Uh, it's always worth being on as many platforms as possible just for mass distribution. But if anything, the platforms that you earn on or that I'm going to show you that I earn on are probably your best bet to be spending your time on. That's my take anyway. Noise.cash has also been growing well. It is the status post equivalent of read.cash, but it's slowed down a little bit, uh, but it's still doing very, very well. Coast.tv has been doing fine and uh, Rockfin has been doing well as well. Uh, the main thing about Rockfin that I would kind of like call out is um, they have a token that I believe is called Ray and I've been earning it but then there's like issues around where it's actually located and where it's stored and how I can actually get access to that. I'll figure all that out uh, and let you guys know how that plays out, but I'm definitely interested to see how that kind of works. So we'll see. Uh, in terms of blockchain interviews, 
I recently talked with uh, Daniel Sachkov, but that was a little bit ago. I just forgot to add it in the last one. Uh, more recently, Alex Melikov from Equilibrium. He also uh, was an original founder for Changely, which is an amazing service. And then I also recently did a second interview um, with uh, Andre Poliakov from Coinberry. A lot of coves. I just realized the last three people that I interviewed. Um, but yeah, so those are good. Check those out. Uh, I'm hoping to set, to set up a few more interviews with some new people. Um, Crimson Clad talking about Hive and being a witness on Hive. The creator of Yup which I'll talk a little bit more about in a bit and uh, the creator of Blurt. So those are just some things that I have in my, uh, on my radar, but um, nothing, you know, set in stone. Plus uh, coming up, I, I, I might be on Naomi Brockwell's show, Joel Valenzuela's show and uh, George Donnelly's show. So, you know, lots is in the work works. Now let's get to what I know you guys are all here for which is my earnings report for August. Now, um, definitely a huge improvement over last month, which is again, really, really nice to see or last, um, yeah, last month and the months prior. So really, really happy to see this, this massive improvement, basically uh, like 2.3 X from before. So again, really, really, really great. And uh, what most of that comes down to, ironically, is all from Yup. So clearly Yup was a good bet. However, it's important to caveat this. A, you have to spend like just stupid gas fees to get your Yup out. I'm checking it every day to try to time it. And it's always like hundreds of dollars. So that is a big, big concern. And I don't think most regular people will never earn enough to be able to withdraw and still make profit, you know? So do keep that in mind. And a lot of that came from creator rewards, um, being a creator on Yup, and then just being rewarded for that rather than individual like up votes and stuff like that, which is important because somehow I'm the number one voted account on Twitter on Yup. Um, so that definitely sets me, you know, apart from normal users, so to speak. But I mean, in a lot of places, I'm like the the top follow person, like read.cash and, you know, in, in several places. And it's just because I'm sponsoring everyone, I'm boosting every day, I'm doing all this different stuff. But you can definitely do all that as well. And um, I would also say that at the same time, I'm also a very small content creator. So I would look at it more as a positive thing than being like daunting, right? Being like, oh no, well, he's like the number one yup guy. So how am I ever going to compete with that? Should be more like, well, if someone who's a small time content creator can become the number one Twitter account on yup, that should be motivating to other people uh, to be able to achieve something similar, whether it's on other platforms that yup rates or whatever. Yup is just an overlay on any social platform. So being the number one on Twitter isn't like a big deal. It's just whoever uses Yup and is on Twitter and happens to also be looking at my profile a lot. And I mean, that makes sense, right? So it's not crazy, but um, everything has been, you know, fairly stable, pretty consistent with, you know, what I normally get for earnings. Library is down a little bit, but I still have high hopes that we're going to see the token value start going back up. Um, Hive has been really good. I've been earning a lot more HBD and then just keeping it. Normally I didn't report on it because I just traded it all for Hive, but now I'm actually keeping all that and staking it. Well, rather I'm staking my Hive, but I'm saving my HBD and earning 10% on that. And that's $133.89 in total from everything on Hive. Leo Finance has been getting more and more dismal, sadly. Uh, it's just because the token value is going down. So that's kind of unfortunate, but it is what it is. Uh, Coast.tv is, uh, you know, consistently pulling uh, a little under $20. Read.cash has been pretty consistent around $100. So that's been really good to see. And, uh, you know, I'm kind of picking things up more on this platform and focusing on it a bit more. Oops, I just noticed I have a 0, 0.0. 
There we go. That's the correct value there. Um, Noise.cash has been earning me a little bit less lately, but um, but I've been earning more on read.cash. So, I mean, it's a give and take, but um, I think a lot more people find noise.cash easier because it's all just like status posts. It's much easier to earn on there versus read.cash. We are more likely to only earn from writing like a long format article. Um, so I would say noise.cash is a great place to kind of get yourself started and just doing basic posts. DTube. DTube has been going through a lot of issues with their like hosting and their domain and all this stuff lately. I don't know what is going on over there, but uh, it feels like it's sort of affected things. But I mean, I still earned $92. So at the end of the day, I mean, if you're still earning a decent amount and things are still working, then, you know, I can't really complain. Um, just been some performance issues, I would say, on the platform. Pocketnet, I earned a little bit more this month, but the price went way down. So it's kind of dismal. I almost wasn't going to include it because 44 cents is is nothing. But um, I think Pocketnet, as it's it's just switched into Bastion and it's building out a bunch of different things, uh, I think once they really get themselves settled, that I'll be earning a lot more. And uh, because I've tested withdrawals and everything works good, um, I feel like it deserves to be included. So yeah. Yup, as I said, was the big earner, but the main caveat and issue being that it's really challenging for me to get these rewards. Like it might be like $300 or something like that to actually withdraw all of this. I only need a hundred yup to be at the best tier possible on yup. So that's not a crazy amount that you really need, especially if you can earn 1400. So I only really feel obligated to keep a hundred and then just sell everything else. But at the same time, uh, my understanding is that as you get more yup and you hold it over a longer period of time, your vote becomes more impactful. Um, but you know, you could hold a hundred for a very long time, or you could hold a thousand for a very long time. The thousand will get you a little bit more, but not substantially. Once you're past a hundred, it's very minuscule. It's more just based on how long you've held it. So keep that in mind. Um, Den.social actually was pretty good recently. I got 200 MTR, but you know, ironically, the flip side of that is, as you'll see in my next report, I only got like five MTR or something. So like literally nothing. Um, but last month or rather August was a really, really good month for Den. So, you know, I'll take what I can get for sure. And I mean, the good thing too about MTR is that it all funnels back into, um, into earning slowly, earning passively. And the great thing about MTR is it's one of the only tokens out there that will automatically earn you passively and compound daily. Most platforms require you to hit claim or to do some action, whereas on MTR, it's automatic. And that is very significant in terms of compounding interest. So I got to give it to them for that. Um, but as more people gain more, they're only printing 10,000 a day and giving that out. So you might end up earning less over time too. So, you know, it is what it is. Um, it really seems to be a common thing now where all these platforms that, um, that use Ethereum have issues around gas fees, right? Den Social, Mines, all these different platforms that use Ethereum, yup. They're all having issues with gas fees right now, but I believe my understanding of Ethereum 2.0 is that we'll see a massive scaling upgrade with sharding in Q1 of 2022. So in the next six months or so, and um, that will solve the majority of these issues. So I think just holding on to your crypto on those platforms right now is probably the best bet. Wait till ETH fees have been you know, dealt with, and then uh, you can really get back into things once the fees are way down and you're not losing a bunch of your funds just to get your funds out. Because again, I think that's really, really important. And it's an important caveat to be aware of um, because making 15, 000, like $1,500 is great, but it's not so great if a huge portion of that is gonna be spent on fees. 
because you're not really earning it at that point. You're earning significantly less. And uh, we know no one likes paying fees, obviously. So, um, but yeah, just keep that in mind. Uh, for Blurt, this is a sort of Hive clone and uh, I've been earning more and more on there. So I'm just kind of doubling down. And, um, you know, $4 is a big increase from the previous like 50 cents or whatever it was. So, you know, I'm happy to uh, continue working on Blurt. And I got a ridiculous amount uh, this month in the month of September. But um, yeah, we'll see how this plays out. I'm excited to see Blurt grow. I know one of my followers is very, very gung ho on Blurt and he's always telling me to get on there and do more. So I am uh, I am trying my best to actually do that. Gaze, uh, Gaze TV is a decent place that I'm, I'm kind of newer to, but uh, you know, I earned over a thousand gays and that's worth uh, $3 and 43 cents. Pretty decent for something fairly new. Um, it's not the best UI, but it works and um, you know, it's worth using. All of these platforms where you can earn money every month for just sharing the stuff that you're going to share anyways, it's all worth using. So many people are like, oh, but like, I don't wanna waste my time. And it's like, well, how much is your time worth? Because if you're going to post this stuff anyway, it's already ready. You just need to post the exact same thing on the other platform too. Find the ones that make the most sense for you or that you understand the best or whatever it happens to be and just double down on those. I still think you should be using all of these, but if anything, at least use a handful. So, you know, certain months when some platforms are doing better and others are doing worse, you can kind of balance that out. But uh, either way, that is that. In terms of the actual breakdown of um, percentage of earnings, you can see that Yup is pretty much the lion's share here and uh, everything else is kind of doing its thing. So, you know, you can pause and take a look at that if you guys want, but nothing super important there. And then we obviously saw this earlier. So very, very good to see that we're starting to uh, go back up. Although a lot of that is due to Yup, unfortunately. Um, but I think we're going to, to still see that increase going forward. Maybe not for October. I mean, for September, because I didn't do very much in September, but in October, I, I think that will, uh, really ramp up because I'm going to be putting a lot more work in and, um, trying to really get on top of things again, but, uh, stay tuned for the next one. Let me know. How are you guys earning? Where's your, like, where, what's your favorite platforms to use? Uh, what are you doing to earn on these platforms? Where do you prefer to share decentralized blockchain platforms, etc.? What are you guys doing to earn crypto these days? Um, even if it's not from social, right? Even if you're just staking or whatever, I'd love to hear from you guys in the comments below, but let me know. And uh, if you did watch to the very end, also make sure to comment hashtag number one ham in the comments below. And that way I know you watch to the very end. I always appreciate you guys for watching to the very end and um, it means the world to me. So thank you so much. And uh, until next time, cheers.